A decade later, in 1987, La Bamba resurrected the memory of Richie Valens. As he researched and acted the leading role, Lou Diamond Phillips connected emotionally with Richie's family. For me and for the family, and in a very weird way, in a very sort of existential way, it was Richie all over again. Richie was there. I know I put Lou through some stuff. I mean, he, he did become Richie to me for those three months. The only time it ever became a, a real issue and, and, and it became a, a difficulty um, was the night that we shot the scene where Marshall Crenshaw and, playing Buddy Holly and myself uh, and Stephen Lee as the Big Bopper get into the plane to take off, to fly away. It was Connie. She came to the set, which might not have been such a good idea for her. Hey, Richie, relax, man. Everything's cool. Besides, the sky belongs to the stars, right? She just starts trembling, and she says to me, "Why did you go? Why did you have to go, Richie? Why did you have to go?" And she throws herself, on, you know, onto me, and uh, she's crying, and and uh, and I'm holding her, and she's just sobbing over and over. Why did you have to go? Why did you have to go? You know, and it was ah, I was lost at that time. You know, I I, I had no no idea what to do. There was so much pain still that we had never been able to just let out. We had never really been able to grieve because everybody used to tell us, be quiet, don't cry. And with La Bamba, all of us were able to finally, I guess, accept, let go. If you do your best. While the making of La Bamba was a healing experience for Richie Valens' family, for the Big Bopper's son born three months after his father's death, Finding closure has been more difficult. I wasn't raised knowing that my father was somebody special. I just know that when I got into my teenage years, I, won't, I asked questions, and I wasn't given answers. One time I was in Houston, and uh, I was sitting on the bus. Before I went on, we was fixing to do a concert. And this, this guy, He's about 20 years old, bounced on the bus and plopped down beside me. And he said, my name is Big Bopper Jr. and I want you to tell me about my daddy, you know. And I looked at him, you know, it really shocked me. So I said, your daddy was a good old boy and a hell of a crap shooter and how in the hell did you get on this bus? The Big Bopper's son also asked Bob Hale about his dad's last hours at the surf ballroom. At that particular time, Buddy's wife was expecting, the bopper's wife was expecting, and my wife was expecting. And while we were sitting there, J.P. Richardson said to my wife, Kathy, may I put my hand on your tummy? And she said, sure. She said, this is what I miss most about being on the road, feeling my baby move in my wife's tummy. And when I told this story to J.P.'s son a few years ago, I mean, he just, the tears just flowed because he said, Bobby, I'm trying to find out who my daddy is. And um, he said, um, now I know my daddy loved me before I was born. That's what I remember most uh, about that night. Chantilly lace and a pretty face and a pony. You know, Dad's, you know, he's more than a footnote to Buddy Holly's death and Richie Ballin's death. Uh, Chantilly lace was released in uh, August of 58. Dad was killed less than six months later. And the song lives today. Uh, and does it live. Oh, baby, that's what I like! <laughs> Today, J.P. carries on his father's rock and roll legacy with his own band. Some kids, their mother or father pass on, leave them a hardware store, you know, real estate, big fat chunk of change. Uh, my dad left me his name and maybe a little bit of his voice. Why, lightning. 
Four decades after the crash, the music of three of rock and roll's early pioneers lives on. Uh, let me in, honey. This is the Big Bopper knocking. The Big Bopper's music is heard in any rock band that wants to get a little goofy now and then. He was the clown prince of his day. Richie Valens can be heard in the music of Los Lobos, in the music of every rock and roll band that features a Latino performer. Buddy Holly's everywhere. He's everywhere. Anytime some kid plugs a Fender guitar into an amp, he's there. In a cornfield on the outskirts of Clear Lake, Iowa, a simple memorial marks the site where the plane carrying Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Bopper fell from the sky on February 3rd, 1959. Every February on the anniversary of the tragedy, rock fans come here to pay tribute to the fallen stars. They gather at the now legendary surf ballroom to celebrate their music. Well, that'll be the day when you say goodbye. Yes, that'll be the day when you make me cry. You say you that stage is, um, that ballroom is a, a bit of a shrine for me. After the crash, DJ Bob Hale left KIRB in Iowa, went to Chicago, and became a popular broadcasting personality. I will say, honestly and unashamedly, I have stood there and said, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to have worked here. And I thank the Lord for allowing me to have met those three young men. It don't seem possible that it's that long a time because uh, they've lived in my mind as they were when they were the entertainers that night. Carol Anderson managed the surf ballroom until 1967. He still lives in Clear Lake. It hurt me pretty deeply. When I think about it, why three young people like that clean cut and then wipe all three of them out. I smile. Every time I hear the song, I smile. So, you know, that's my song. Donna Fox, the woman who inspired Richie Valens, married and had five children. Her California license plate reads, Donna. Just the other night, I had someone who said, you're Richie Valens, Donna, aren't you? <laughs> so they haven't forgotten him, so that's important. They haven't forgotten him. If you knew Peggy Sue, then you know why I feel blue without Peggy. Peggy Sue Guerin and Cricket's drummer Jerry Allison divorced in the 60s. Peggy Sue still lives in Lubbock. A lot of the 13-year-old boys, which I might add are, are avid Buddy Holly fans around the world, uh, they write to me and they say, he, you know, the music makes me feel, and it's okay to feel. It's okay to have a girlfriend. It's okay to be excited. It's even okay to cry. And I think that's the strength of the music. I love you, Peggy Sue. After Nicky Sullivan left the Crickets, he formed his own band. Twelve years later, he quit music altogether and is now a businessman in Missouri. As of 1978, 350 artists had recorded our music. The number is double that now, even 20 more years after the fact. That's the legacy that was left. I, I wish there was a way that Buddy could find out. Maybe, maybe he knows. Who knows? Tommy also went on to produce Willie Nelson's first recordings. He lives in Nashville, where he continues to produce records and play guitar. Everywhere I go, people, you know, when, when they hear my name and, and somebody will mention something about Buddy Holly, they'll, oh, yeah, how come you wasn't on that plane, you know? 
And people still remember it. Never a week goes by that I don't think about it. After the death of his friend Buddy, Waylon Jennings began recording his own music and became one of country music's leading artists, selling over 40 million records worldwide. I wonder what they would have been doing now, you know. I didn't know Richie Valens well enough to know. He was smart and a good musician and, and a good writer. So he would have still been in it. The Big Bopper would probably own most of the radio stations in the country. <laughs> and uh, Buddy probably would have had his own label. He was a great idea man and he loved music. I don't think he would ever quit singing. Today the music died, they say, but the music didn't die. Of course, Buddy's not with us anymore, but the music's still here. There's no excuses or reasons for why it stays alive. It just is. It's simple as that. Well, all right, so I'm being foolish. Well, all right. Let people know about the dreams and wishes you wish in the night. You were raised on radio? Prove it. What was the biggest song of 1978? How about 1967? Find out as host John Lovitz looks back on 40 years of the Billboard Top 40, featuring every year's number one single and the pop culture phenomenons and news events that rocked the world. Monday night, beginning at 8, 7 central, only on VH1. Well, all right, so I'm going steady It's all right when people say That those foolish kids can't be ready For the love 